G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, this is just a bit of an update on where I'm at in the workshop. A few things I've bought and a few things that have gone well and one thing that didn't go, well, quite so well. Anyway, first off, a new oil can, another oil can, another Riga, 10 bucks. And it's a nice little can actually. Um, that means I've now got seven Rigas, uh, one for every day of the week. <laughs> I looked at this on the shelf in the dealers and at 10 bucks I thought oh, I just can't pass up on that. In actual fact I got it for eight. I said is this the best you can do and he goes oh how about eight and I said that sounds good to me. The only thing wrong with it is that I mean it's a really good one. It's it's the perfect Riga. It's got the brass top, the brass pump, the rolled edges on the on the grip. It's the little one which is nice. It matches the one that my father had, which is identical. He, he used that all his life as a motor mechanic. Still perfect. They're a good size then. Because you can you know you can get bigger ones too, like there's the bigger one there that you can see. So yeah, I've got riggers laid on now. Um, what was I saying? Put that away. Well the only downside is that it had a few pinholes in the bottom from rust. So I had to just run the soldering iron, just put a couple of little dobs of solder just to fix the pinholes. Apart from that, she's good as new, so that easily, they're easily fixed. If the bottom was really buggered, you can actually unsolder the bottom, take it out, cut a new disc and, and put a whole new bottom in. They're, they're easy to fix, you know, these things just go and go. So, that's item number one. Item number two, well, you've all seen my old Shorblin and you know that I recently got a, a couple of uh, Shorblin bits on an old lathe I picked up cheap, a new tar another tail stock and I got another head stock. Well this is the original, this is the original tail stock and it's got a little live center on it that's uh, Chinese but you know, quite good. And these are more, uh, these are two degree taper Shorblin um, taper on them originally but a lot of them get converted across to Morse 1 and that's what this one's been done it's been converted to Morse 1 and uh, yeah, it's a nice neat little job so quite good anyway well I got the the new the new old tail stock uh, I've done it up so it's usable and I ordered a Morse 2 live centre for it and a Morse 2 ER32 collet shut. Anyway, the Morse 2 uh, live centre came first. So I'll swap over the uh, tail stocks and you can see what happened. So here's the, here's the Morse 2 tail stock, pretty rare in this old stuff, they, you know, Morse 2 tail stocks and shovel and old stuff like this, phew, very, very hard to get. Anyway, so, where's the new, where's the new uh, Morse uh, 2 live centre that came? Well, I'll show you. And here it is, ta-da! Oh yeah, very nice looking live centre that, very nice. There's just one problem. I ordered a Morse 2 and yep, they sent me a, a Morse 3. How good is that, eh? So, it won't fit this. You know, you've got the dramas of send it back and all the rooting around. And then I thought, well, hang on. The original Morse 2 life centre was $22. When I look at these, these are 66 same, you know, the next size up. So that, you know, three times as much. So I said to the guy, well, you know, I really don't want to send it back. Can I keep it? And he said, yeah, okay. Mind you, I'd already put in some bad feedback on him. So he <laughs> I had him over a barrel because he wanted me to get rid of the bad feedback. So on the, on the condition that I got rid of the bad feedback, he let me keep the Morse 3 live centre, which is really nice. I mean, there's no slop or movement. It's as tight as a drum. 
I tried it out in the uh, Chinese lathe because it will fit my Chinese lathe. And uh, the run out is the same as the old one. It's pretty good, you know, 0 0.023 round there, millimetre. So now it means I've got to now order another Morse 2 live centre or just forget about the Morse 2 and just use the old Morse 1 and the other tail stop. The more important thing I wanted to order was the uh, ER32 collet chuck because then I can grip all sorts of stuff including dead centres and uh, I've got some carbide chip um, dead centres and stuff so this would be that'll be a lot more useful than this but I still would have liked to have a Morse too so I'll show you some interesting points about these live centres too while we're on this video I'll go to the uh, go across the Chinese lathe now here's the existing live centre I've got which is uh, one I bought locally I think I paid about I don't know, 50, 60 bucks for it over 10 years ago. It's done a lot of work and it's, it's got marking in the end, so, you know, a new one might hurt. Here's the new one in comparison. It's longer, but it's also got a longer work envelope on the point, so that'll be handy because this one's quite big diameter. This one's smaller. Quite often I can't get the four-way in close enough uh, because of the diameter of this thing. This is a tapered roller bearing plus uh, two ball races. This one is three ball races, and they both are adjustable. And the end of the look of it, they've got notches for a spanner. The interesting thing with, all, with these uh, last centers is when you buy them, they never have a tang on them. I mean, I've never seen a live center with a tang on it. Even that little one, that Morse one in the Shoreblum. No tang, so if you want to eject them, they won't eject. Well, not through the normal process. The only way you can eject them is to basically wind it back and put the chuck key in there and just pop it off that way, which is what I used to do. <laughs> but, you know, it's easy just to uh, get a metric thread that fits and just screw it in and then grind it off until you get the... Uh, the right amount of stub on on the tang on the, uh, the taper, so it'll just pop off. You see, so it's popping off, coming undone in the last little bit. So yeah, no problem. So that's what you do. You just just do a thread and put it on there. But it makes you wonder why they don't put a tang on to begin with. It it just seems weird. And I've seen people in forums ask the same question. Strange. I mean. Then, of course, there's a debate. What's the tang there for? Is it there to stop the, the uh, taper turning? Or is it there just for ejection? Well, I mean, in, in a drill press, it's there basically to do both. With a live centre, uh, the taper actually does grip and lock on. I mean, that's why they use tapers on flywheels, on crankshafts and that. And I mean, a lot of British motorbikes and that, old villiers and that, they didn't even have a keyway that you could rotate the flywheel to any position on the crankshaft and just pull it up on the taper. And provided it's pulled up hard, it won't slip. You know, they grip really well. But uh, so anyway, that's that. So, yeah, not bad. I mean, overall, I've come out in front. But it was a bit annoying at the time, and I got a bit angry, and, yep, I put up the negative comment. You know, we'll move on and look at what arrived uh, just a few minutes ago. And here it is, nicely packaged. It's the ER32 collet chuck. Come in plastic. And I've got to say, it's uh, absolutely beautifully made a little collet chuck. I mean, it's just fantastic. Really good. I think I paid about $28 for this. But I mean, this is really, really well finished off and machining is magnificent. So, Morse 2. There we go. So I'll be right now to hold uh, anything I like in the, in the Morse 2 tail stop.
that fits good. But once again, you have the same, the same problem. It won't eject because there's no ejection tang on the back. We can easily get it out with a punch. Now she comes, so now it means I've got to make up a, a thread to go on the back of this, the same as the other ones. I mean, they often give you a little cap that screws in, but why they couldn't give you a tang that screws in? You can get tangs that screw in, I know, I've seen them. But I mean, a bit of thread works just as well. You know, it's just a weird situation. But yeah, I like that, that's nice, really nice. And what else? Well, the only other thing is I've done up the headstock. The old headstock is done up. It hasn't been painted, of course, because the weather's too cold, but I'll show you where that's at. And you can see the, the latest progress in uh, that area. And here it is. It's uh, turned out pretty good. I mean, this is in excellent condition as far as the spinnable bushes are concerned. It's done virtually very little work. It was heavily corroded. You can still see it's pitted it up in places, pitting there. It's no big deal, but it's marked it. It took me three goes, three days of electrolysis to get the rust off this thing. It was that bad. But at the end of the day, it's uh, it's a good unit. And uh, once the weather warms up, I'll paint both of these, the uh, Shelburne and Black, and I'll fit Fit them on the old uh, Shoreblum 102 laid uh, bed. This is definitely more accurate. I checked if I run out. This is down around the 0 0.02 or less millimetre. The other one's about twice as much as that. So I'll be putting this on. Everything's good and tight. Uh, the poly's tight. B bushes and spindle are tight. And even though it doesn't have a thrust race to take the end load, I think it'll probably be okay. I'll give it a go anyway, but certainly I did that pretty good. And when you consider, you know, to buy this and this, over a thousand bucks worth of stuff, a couple of hundred, yeah, I mean, if you know what stuff's worth, you can you can come out pretty well in these deals, so, and it's always handy. Being a, a Shoreburn 102 fan, well, it's nice to have this stuff, and uh, you just can't lose. All right, well, that's it from me for now. Uh, until next time, I hope you found it interesting, and, uh, yeah, cheers. See ya.